From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. State-backed attacks excluded from cyber insurance. The insurance marketplace Lloyd's of London will introduce exclusions for cyber insurance policies to not cover catastrophic state-backed attacks. These exclusions will begin in new policies in March 31st, 2023. Lloyd's warns that all insurance underwriters need to make it extremely clear in policies that state-sponsored attacks fall outside of coverage. This applies regardless of any declared war between two countries. This reflects that state-sponsored attacks often aren't directly after financial gain, but are the result of geopolitical considerations. This also comes as insurance providers shy away from ransomware coverage as costs increase. Lockbit hit with a DDoS. Last month, the security company Entrust disclosed threat actors exfiltrated data from its network. Bluebeam Computer Sources said this represented a ransomware attack. Last week, Lockbit took credit for the attack and began posting data on its leak site. That information proved hard to find because security researchers found it unavailable due to a DDoS attack. The security research group VX Underground reports that Lockbit believes the attack is from someone connected to Entrust. The attackers added a message to the site's browser user agent demanding removal of the stolen data. In response, Lockbit's site now says it plans to upload all of Entrust data as a torrent for anyone to download. Cozy Bear using Microsoft accounts to bypass MFA. Security researchers at Mandiant released a report detailing this new technique from the Russian-backed threat group. This exploits the self-enrollment process for applying MFA, where organizations allow users to enroll a device the next time they log in. Since there's no additional verification to this enrollment, anyone with a username and password can enroll their own device into MFA as long as they're the first to try it. This can be useful for obtaining access to deactivated or test accounts, which Mandiant observed. From there, attackers accessed organizations' VPN infrastructure. Mandiant recommends organizations ensure additional protections to verify users when they register accounts. UK Conservatives Go Ahead with Online Voting The UK's Conservative Party will offer internet voting for the first time as part of its leadership election. About 160,000 qualifying party members will receive a ballot pack in the mail that will include a paper mail-in ballot as well as security codes to vote online. The party used guidance from the UK's National Cybersecurity Centre to build its online voting system. Earlier this month, the NCSC warned against the Conservatives' plans for online voting. As part of a revised process, the codes in the ballot packs will expire as soon as they're used, meaning you can't log back in. The winner of this election will be the UK's next Prime Minister, so pretty high stakes. And now thanks to this week's episode sponsor, Code42. Have you been thinking about launching an insider risk management program? You don't need to be big brother to effectively address insider risk. Code42 believes that the three E's should define any IRM program, expertise, education, and enforcement. Shift your security culture from watchdog to guide dog and everybody wins. Learn more at code42.com slash show me. Critical flaw found in Chromium OS audio server. Microsoft security researcher Jonathan Barr Orr found a bug in the service which routes audio to peripherals. This could use audio metadata to cause a local memory corruption. Audio played in a browser or over a paired Bluetooth device could trigger the bug. Ultimately, the flaw could open the door to remote code execution. Orr reported the issue to Google back in April. It was already in process of patching the flaw when it received the report and released an update in mid-June. Attackers target travelers with fake reservations. The recent uptick in travel has seen the threat group TA558 ramping up malicious activity. The group operated a 2018 campaign of fake reservation emails with malicious links. It revived the strategy, but with a new twist. Following a larger malware trend, the group now uses RAR and ISO file attachments to their malicious emails. This leads to the execution of a PowerShell script, followed by downloading the async rat. Microsoft's recent ban on macros by default in Office documents led many threat groups to change to similar tactics. Media industry proves slow to patch. A new study by Blue Voyant found that out of almost 500 vendors in the media industry, it observed 28% with critical vulnerabilities on internet-facing systems. Content management providers accounted for 50% of these vulnerabilities. Meanwhile, the study found less than 15% of media monetization platforms hosting vulnerable systems. Looking at the recent Atlassian Confluence vulnerability, Blue Voyant found eight monitored companies had not patched the high-severity issue six weeks after its release. NSO Group shuffles leadership. 
The Israeli spyware company's CEO, Shalev Julio, stepped down effective immediately, replacing the role by COO Yaron Shohat on an interim basis. Reuters sources say the company will cut 100 employees as part of an overall reorganization. Part of this will see the company focusing on NATO member countries and streamlining operations. Remember, we just posted another great episode of the CISO series podcast entitled It's Okay to Look Like a Cyberhero, Just Don't Act Like One. This breaks down why cybersecurity leaders need to turn away from hero and savior mentality and instead adopt a supporting role that can run alongside business units trying to find ways to help them run smoother and more secure. It isn't a simple task to go from being a solver to a sidekick, and the episode breaks down all the potential pitfalls. Look for it in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 